Hello, am I audible? Shall I start? Please, ma'am, please carry on. Okay. So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first, thanks, CDAC, for the nice recapitulation of Varshad. Uh, on this topic, again, we are two, we two persons are here, me, Amrita, and Anurag, and we'll jointly present our whole presentation. So, this topic is a bit of uh, to understand. I mean, uh, a lot of theories are there before we do the demonstration. So we'll do a lot of work in theory, then we'll go for demonstration also. So let us first analyze what is network. Everybody knows two or more uh, machines connected through a van. Now, if there are two machines, we can directly connect through an Ethernet cable, no issue. But if there are more than two machines, so we have two Ethernet ports, we can connect two machines. One machine will be living alone. So the solution is switch. Now the client machine will definitely will contact the server machine to get the, request, uh, get the requested service. So this, so that till now the network is like that, client machines are there, servers are there, and these machines are connected through a switch. Now, if these machines want to go to internet, there must be a router. And of course, if we are going, if we are landing in the internet, then we must have a firewall to protect ourselves. So a very, very, very basic network consists of client machine, servers, switch, firewall, and router. Now securing, securing all this stuff and uh, find out, uh, to find out what are the vulnerabilities are there, is basically the content of this topic. Operating system, intermediary between hardware and software. So whatever we are typing, everything has to be converted into 1010. This task is being carried by operating system. So basically the number of interface or number of ways we can uh, interact with uh, hardware via OS every the, all the doors has to be secured this is the main job of operating system vulnerability analysis so am i clear what we are going to discuss in this topic so uh, there are various type of testing we'll cover everything then uh, what are the component of vulnerability analysis basically it comprises two vulnerability analysis technique one is configuration and another is service and of course, we'll show that all the demonstrations. Type of testing, there are three types of testing. If uh, we first, our first uh, motto is to secure the server. So we do first vulnerability assessment. Previously, we used to go on the client side and do all this job. So basically it was on-site job, but now COVID, we have, uh, changed our technique, now we can do it through remote VPN also. So thanks to COVID, they have, they have taught us a new technique. Next, once the server is secured via vulnerability assessment, next task is to secure the applications which are going to be deployed on those servers. So this process is being carried out by application security testing. And once we have secured server and secure application, now we have to test remotely what is the view of hacker in our, our uh, secure application. How far, whether is there any hole we are missing behind, leaving behind. So all these things carried out by penetration testing. So vulnerability objective very, very important, identify. Every vulnerability is not to be taken care of. We have to identify the very, very crucial misconfiguration or service vulnerability and very important, verifying it is. If tool is telling and just go and do it, no. We have to verify through manual testing. So for that, we need to understand what type of vulnerability is that 
and we have to go, we have to secure our network. So though there are a lot of commercial tools are available, but manual verification is the ultimate step for eliminating false positive. So basically, when we do a vulnerability scanning, remember there are two types of scanning. One is configuration scanning, another one is service vulnerability. Service vulnerability basically we get from scanning. So actually what it identifies, very important out of date software version. If the patches are not implemented properly, definitely it is the, I mean, uh, eye of hacker. So we have to upgrade the system as well as patches. I mean, the, all the applications that is deployed over there. Many tools are available, majorly use measures because it gives very less false positive, but there are other also very good tools like OpenPass, Core Impact. And for configuration vulnerability, we have designed scripts, understanding the need to secure the servers it is being designed by SDQC, the script specific to operating system, like for Windows one script, for Linux another script, and show everything in demonstration how the scripts work. As I have already told, is the basic aim of vulnerability is basically to mitigate the risk. So we'll try to identify non-compliance, design flaws, system misconfiguration, and if some wrong practices are being carried out. There. So, of course, first we'll do port or service scanning because ports are only will give us the idea what are the service or rather if the service is associated with the port. If the services are available, what is the vulnerability with that? We have to review everything, configuration as well as scan report. And finally, we generate a report giving our recommendation with the aim to secure the server so this is the very gist i have uh, told whatever we have this i have discussed till now that is the very brief uh, uh, very brief uh, of uh, what we do actually in the vulnerability analysis first port or service scanning then vulnerability scanning because if the service is there then only we will be able to find out the vulnerability and configuration review Oh, this is the part we need to understand. See, basically we are dealing with two type of uh, operating system. One is Windows. If it is server in general, Windows server 2012 up to, to up to 2019. But uh, although uh, because rest of the servers are now obsolete, I mean server or so. From 2012 up to 2019, whatever server is there, what is the first way to secure a machine? First level of defense is password. Whenever we uh, give password, we have to check whether the password is strong enough or not. So if I give uh, my username root, password root, or username admin, password admin, so I can say, yes, I have implemented password, but is it to be password is strong enough to defend your system? Definitely the answer is no. So, and this can be, uh, we can find out only from configuration analysis. We cannot find out it from vulnerability scanning. I mean, from the service scanning. So the password must have minimum age, maximum age, password must expire after regular interval. It must be at least 12 characters, one uppercase, one lower, lowercase, alphanumeric. Like this way, it is up to the organization password policy, how they want to secure their, uh, or secure their organization or rather their assets. But minimum this must be there if any organization wants to deploy their password policy. That is one uppercase, one lowercase, alphanumeric, and minimum 12 characters lock. Previously it was eight characters, but nowadays we recommend 12 characters. Then if suppose my, my system is very secure, 
but if my my operating system is not upgraded regularly updates are not there uh, I, I mean the machine is not connected to internet and machine is not getting its update regularly then again the system is the weak zone so it is very 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 important to upgrade the uh, security patches regularly it's for system also operating system also at the same time for the services also and everything we can find out from configuration analysis designed by the script by uh, i mean the script that is being designed by our organization now suppose if you have implemented a strong password so definitely it is very difficult it's not impossible it is very difficult i will say to enter your system but if some person is trying to enter your system regularly we must have one log for that so that i can get idea somebody is trying to enter my system and of course in my absence if somebody is trying to access my system so definitely motive is not good for that it is very very important to implement audit policy so this also can be uh, we can find out all these things from configuration analysis of windows system next is the share permission well if we are in network we have to give some share but some share must not be given to all here i have mentioned one antivirus everyone all means everybody is able to read write it is it a correct configuration no definitely no so everyone must get the read permission admin should get only the all permission so these are some important very very important configuration analysis for windows system Next is for Linux system. See for me. Well, uh, as I'm switching to different windows, whether any question is there from windows uh, system vulnerability analysis, this is basically for configuration analysis. Please keep it in mind. Later we'll show service vulnerability also. Anurag, is there any question? Well, we have received one question. Well, um, the question is like that, if the pirated OS is used, then how we can secure it? See, in government, it is strictly against policy to use pirated version of operating systems. Now, if anybody is using pirated version of operating system, then it's up to that organization, their own responsibility to secure this. So they are taking the risk to compromise their assets. Here we are talking uh, the uh, version which are already licensed still we have to secure ourselves so with the licensed version also we have to secure ourselves so how I, we can expect that with pirated version our assets will be secure so it is strictly against policy and strongly recommended to use licensed version of all the system and uh, we can use windows update server for who's to update our system regularly and uh, of course we must have the uh, checking maybe periodic checking also whether any update is available or not and if any update is superseding the previous update so we may discard that one and we may incorporate the latest update so well any other question well okay so well now i uh, we are moving to linux system Whatever is the system, whether it is Windows or Linux, password policy must be there to secure ourselves. Although we do not see the passwords in Linux, that doesn't mean password policy should not be there. 
And this also can be, we can find out from uh, configuration analysis of Linux system. And in, uh, what is the UID of root in, uh, in Linux system? Anybody, any idea? They can give answer in chat also. Well, the UID of root is zero. So it is very, very important point to note when we are doing the configuration analysis for Linux system. So root is the only person or only user who is privileged to do everything. Any other user should not be there with UID zero. So only one per user should be there with UID zero, and that is root. If and if there are more than one user with UID zero, one user, of course, the non-root user has to be dropped. It is it is very strongly recommended configuration policy. Now, sometimes our administrator, for sake of our own, uh, what to say? Uh, for the sake of, I mean, just um, for all arrangement, they run some unnecessary services. Suppose if a web server is supposed to have only 80 or 443 code, sometimes they run FTP service also in the same server. So it is very important to understand the role of the server. If it is web server, FTP should not be there, even if it is uh, securely configured. Then also it should not be there. It is not recommended. So unnecessary services, another issue we should take care when we are doing the configuration vulnerability analysis of Windows system. And next is a cron job. What actually this cron utility does, it first, uh, it, if we want to schedule any task, that is, it should run periodically or weekly or every day at 5 a.m., 10 p.m., like this way. So where will we go? We have to go for cron utility only. Does it mean anybody can go and do this? No, because it is for the, for the security of organization, security of the whole, uh, uh, whole manpower of that organization. So cron utility must be restricted to root user or admin user and it must must be there in cron.allow file there are two files associated with crons there are many other files uh, rather associated with cron but two very important files cron.allow and cron.deny cron.allow file must allow only the root user if cron.allow file is having root user then cron.deny must must have the users who are not allowed to configure the services. If you compare among these two, cron.allow is very, very important file. And it also can be, uh, I mean, we can find out everything from configuration vulnerability analysis. So up to this much, we have discussed about Windows operating system configuration analysis, Linux system configuration analysis. But our network does not comprise only servers or client machine. There are other parts also, switch, router, firewall. So actually, as the switch, router, firewall are from different vendors, and their task is very, very limited. A router will do routing only. A switch will connect machines and forward packet as per the need of the ports. And firewall is, will drop traffic or allow traffic based on the rule of the firewall. But here also you get some common uh, vulnerabilities like telnet service. So we know telnet service ran in port 23. One question came from the Nagesh Paswan. Is Windows NT server is in use? Yes, right now. Yes, it depends upon the organization to organization, which uh, organization has some work or to do some multitasking at the scheduling or to do some uh, con 
like a task they will use windows nt according to them uh, if uh, they have to if they have to take some backup configuration backup or data backup uh, either periodically basis they can use windows nt depends upon the uh, depend it depends upon the organization actually uh, our stqc is also doing using the windows nt server well yeah that, but uh, of course, we are already using various version and with appropriate patches. So, yes, you can use if, uh, uh, I mean, if your organization allow you to use, you can use, but of course, it has to be secure. You know? it, it's like that way. Only. So, thank you, Anurag. So, based on experience, you have told everything. Actually, Anurag is a very hardworking person. So, thank you, Anurag. Your experience came here. Well, now is the network device OS. So what the service we get actually telnet service. So to run telnet service, whether it is allowed, no, it is not allowed. So what we have to do, we have to run SSH service. Then password is also uh, in, uh, appropriate for this uh, network devices also. I mean. Password should be in encrypted form. If it is not in encrypted form, then from the configuration file, if it is available outside, because it's a very, very secure asset, but if due to some uh, misconfiguration, if anybody is able to get the password, then they can enter the network and they can do whatever malicious intention they have. So to secure asset, you get, we recommend that telnet service should not be allowed Instead of that, only SSH with version 2. And another important parameter of SSH service is that permit root login should be should be explicitly mentioned as no. So even if we are not using telnet service, we are using SSH service. But if we are using lower version SSH or if we are allowing permit root login, then again my system is vulnerable. So uh, so it is strongly recommend not to use telnet service, use SSH service, of course, and with appropriate uh, appropriate version and permit root login should be set as no. Now this, of course, a, a big network, they must be using SNMP. Now for the sake of easiness, or uh, is doing mentality, we keep the SNMP pub string as public to read every data and uh, private to write the data. If if it is within single organization and everybody is very, very, we expect no, everybody is trustworthy, they will never do anything harm to us, we can keep this. But if we don't work, we don't want to proceed based on trust factor or we, and we Think, let us think, uh, let us secure our assessed assets with the uh, methods available, then we must not keep community string as public or private. Rather, and of course, here is also the same thing. If you are not using public or private string, but you are using SNMP version one, then also your system is vulnerable. So SNMP string should not be public and private and version should be latest version. 3.2 or above. So, uh, at, up to this part, we are done with uh, well, uh, configuration analysis. I will uh, request Anura. Anura, can you please show some demonstration for this Windows system, Linux system? we are using some uh, our test server for uh, yes. for taking the uh, configuration vulnerability for, for demonstration, demonstration purpose. purpose we have secured as well, uh, i mean we have uh, not secured our vulnerable os so that we can show the demonstration We are going to our Kali Linux server. 
so that we can show you the server vulnerability related to Linux system. So, uh, uh, yeah, it is a uh, but I will request you to change the comment. Okay, so please change the system comment. So is it visible enough? Can participants see is whatever we are typing? So we have one script for uh, design for Linux system and we will run that script and we'll try to analyze the vulnerability. And this is definitely better to configuration. It is running, the script is still running and we are waiting for the output. Let us analyze whether we have any vulnerability or not. It is taking a lot of output. So from that uh, start, we have to understand. We have to understand what is the necessity for us to secure the system. So script has run successfully. If the script has run successfully, definitely it will generate one text file. Yes, that is the text file we have to analyze. So, uh, first we got the OS supports Linux. And uh, it's a Debian Linux basically. Then, uh, version is 5.9.0. So, this is the uh, host name is ES file. So, up to this much, we have got the host detail of the system. That is, it's a host name is ES file. It's a Here we'll try to find out the vulnerability. See, here in 225 or 9286, we can see configure minimum password age in etc login. And the next one is configure maximum password age. That means we have configured our uh, system, I mean, with password policy. That part Passwords are not strong enough to secure my, to prevent any kind of attack. So these are the drawbacks it has told us. Then, as I told, there are many cron files, but two important files are cron.allow and cron.deny. So we are having this vulnerability also. No cron.allow files and no cron.deny files. If cron.allow is uh, not there, if they are that it must be uh, configured with root or root user only. Let's see the protocol. Yes, 
it is not their SSH, I mean, not their leg, SSH is there. But uh, what is the version? We do not know. Again, permit root login is also not in configured. So, permit root login must be no. This is also not mentioned here. So, this is another vulnerability. Yes, UID is only one, UID zero is only one user root. So, these are your security. So, this is the vulnerability we can find out. The configuration vulnerability which uh, administrator has to fix. Now we can switch over the Windows configuration error, Windows configuration vulnerability. We have we have already run our script of, uh, on one of our uh, testing server. We can uh, Windows, server. Windows server. We are directly showing our configuration vulnerability result direct here because we have lagging. We are lagging behind some time. So this is a vulnerability configuration vulnerability report of Windows system. So we can find that the name of the server is ES Tool Server, and with the operating system Microsoft Windows Server in 2019. So uh, is there any IP available? Yes. So it is a uh, 10 network IP, so 10 dots together 1 dot 60. So this is the most information we have got. Now, is the, if it is the operate, uh, operating system is Windows, it is very important to find out the patches. So let us check when our system was upgraded. Well, it was 8. It is actually in YYDD. No, no, sorry, it is MMDD YYYI format. So, 8 October. So, this system is not upgraded after 8 October. So, is it allowed? Well, Microsoft, if they have not declared any update, yes, our system is secure. But if 1st of January, if Microsoft has released any update, then of course, system is not vulnerable and not secure, it is vulnerable. Very important account and audit policy. That is the password. See, minimum eight zero days, maximum eight zero days. So that means it is password policy is there, but it is weakly configured. So it is also vulnerable, and no audit policy is there. Next part the share part. Everything should not be allowed to all. Everything should be restricted to admin only. So here we can see, yes, our share is securely configured. So of course, share wise, we are secure. So this is a configuration vulnerability analysis of a Windows system. Next target, we'll try to find out the uh, ser service vulnerability of Windows system and the Linux system. We have shown you two configuration vulnerabilities of Windows system and Linux system. For the same system, we will show you the service vulnerability. Well, for vulnerability analysis, uh, we majorly use missiles uh, for, I mean, for service scanning analysis. So, NASA's client basically contact the NASA server. It is available in Chernobyl, and uh, then it will cover the range of, uh, I mean, the range of uh, host supposed to scan. Now. Service scanning may identify huge number of vulnerabilities. We have given you some commonly available vulnerabilities. See, the first one is related to HTTPS service, right? It's basically what is the purpose of HTTPS? To encrypt the service so that no one else can get whatever is being uh, traversed in the network. So, to do that, we must have strong cycles. 
if the cipher is not strong enough then a uh, intelligent person intelligent with malicious intention for person can hack uh, can decrypt the network although if it is not easy but yes it is doable and can get the idea of whatever we are uh, sending from uh, sender to receiver client to server so see the algorithm we have mentioned here it is not secure because it is using md5 uh, sorry if for encryption it is using 3ds cbc 3ds is not con con considered as strong cipher so if we found that although HTTPS is implemented, but algorithms are not strong enough, then the site is actually not so much secure. We believe with the HTTPS, it happens to be. So, from there, we, uh, we find a conclusion that if we see any site HTTPS and we find, yes, we are secure to do uh, financial transaction, the answer is definitely no. But if you see any site with authorization from HTTPS, definitely we can do there because we do all the analysis here. Some of the commonly uh, medium uh, like we, ciphers we, which, which we don't recommend is RC code, also CBC, H3DS, like this way. Nmap is there to identify what are the strong algorithms. Actually, one question comes from Nage. Nagesh pass one also. Uh, is there any code to convert HTTP to HTTPS? As there is no as such code or tool which convert HTTP to HTTPS, we should uh, we should configure our HTTP server with some uh, SSL certificate with uh, some digital cert digital certificate with some strong site recommended cipher. The combination of HTTP site and with the SSL. Uh, um, SSL certificate is called as HTTPS. There is no such code, and the SSL certificate should be certified by some certifying authority. Yes, very correct. So that is again PKI uh, architecture. You know that is again a different zone of cyber security, and this is a vast zone. It doesn't come under the scope of this topic. So another very commonly available vulnerability is HTTP method. Well, there are many methods: get, get, post, trace, connect, delete, delete, put, options. So all the methods are not considered as safe. We strongly recommend only get, get, and post method. And if we get trace and track. Yes, very, very vulnerable because they help us to debug the web servers. So I'll speed up it up as we are running out of time. Again, related as HTTPS protocol is very, very important. So I have covered many topics from HTTP traffic only. Next is protocol. What is the current protocol? TLS 1.2 or above. TLS 1.2 is also now it is not uh, considered as strong uh, protocol. So if TLS 1.2 is also not considered as a strong protocol, so definitely SSL V2, V3, TLS 1.0, 1.1, we are very, very vulnerable. Now, if a site is using uh, e-procurement or financial transaction, then these are the facts we have to be take care of very, 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 very close uh, observation is required for that, for this kind of sites. So, even if we are using TLS 1.2 or above, cipher suits must be appropriate. There should not be 3DS, there should not be RC code. So, but if we are using any static site, which is only showing only limited information, for that we can optimize that protocol, although it is not recommended, but we can do for the sake of organization if it is very, very necessary for them to uh, post their service as early as possible. But even if they, uh, people are in very much need, we cannot do, allow 
we cannot allow it for equal size of bank inside, especially if STQC never, never does. So we can we'll show one demonstration for scan vulnerability also. So again, I am handing over to Anurag. He will take care of the uh, demonstration part. See, this is the tool server for that is a Windows server 10.0.1.60 and Linux server 10.0.1.106. So, but, uh, this scan result gives us some happy news as there are critical vulnerability 0, high 0, medium 0, some uh, even low vulnerability is also 0. So, well, we are happy. We are happy that uh, our service is configured properly, although we have some configuration vulnerability. But see, again here we are getting SSL uh, medium cycle suit. So this, this we can find out from service can vulnerability. So here somebody asked me in morning that if tools are used it is so much uh, uh, there are so much automated tools, why do you go for manual basis? See, here we have got so, so much of vulnerability. Do we need to report everything to the client? No, because one vulnerability is superseding another vulnerability. See, here we can see one example here, it is TLS 1.0. So this is vulnerability. So, uh, so next is TLS again version 1.0 vulnerability. So two vulnerability with the same uh, same uh, protocol. So what we need to actually what we need to do we have to disable. So basically we have to disable this protocol. So if we disable this protocol, this vulnerability will vanish out. So it is not necessary to report everything. We have to understand identify what are the vulnerabilities actually affecting the organization. Now again, we can see here one is remote desktop service. But with remote desktop service, do we go to internet? No. So we may not take this vulnerability as a serious one. Rather, let us go try to find out whether we have any other vulnerability which will affect the traffic coming from internet. And yes, another happy piece of news for us that critical is zero, high is zero, two is zero, and some information are there regarding the host, which will uh, show us the information of the host. So, here we do not get any idea about the scan vulnerability. So, for this demonstration purpose, we have prepared one vulnerability list we get from scan vulnerability. Anura, can you please show that list? See, yes, this much of vulnerabilities are there. In our system, well, of course, we will not uh, tell the name of the client. It's against our policy. First one is with password policy, that is from configuration vulnerability. Prone utility is not restricted, again, from configuration vulnerability. As Prawn utility we got, so we got the idea that it is a Linux based system. SSH protocol. They have implemented in SSH, but it is not secure. It is insecure. Then web servers having some default files like PHP info file, some test file, some robots.txt file, which are not allowed to be in production server. Unnecessary HTTP method. So as I told, only gate hit and post method should be allowed. If we get more than, uh, if other than these uh, methods, we consider that system as vulnerable system. Then PHP version. Now any version, whether it is PHP or web server, this Apache or Tomcat version is not recommended to recommended to be displayed because 
it may lead to zero day attack. Now, what is zero day attack? That is again our first topic. So that is beyond this scope of this presentation. Next is as I have shown you weak as an MP community stream vulnerability. That is for network devices. That is they are using public or private. Then they have implemented TLS. That is HTTPS traffic is there. But the algorithms are not strong enough to secure my system. Then X11 server vulnerabilities. This is also not recommended to be there. And cross site scripting vulnerabilities. So here it comes basically the application security part. Headers are not implemented properly, the security headers rather. And uh, the input and the form fields which are taking those inputs, they are also not validated as per the OWAS standard. Again, HTTP trash track vulnerability. So again, these are all unnecessary methods. It should not be there. HTMCP service vulnerability. If the service is not required, as I told, some unnecessary service is also running. So if the service is not required, if the service, if server is web server or application server, what is the need of this service? So we will allow, we will not allow this service. Then some configuration information like a PHP info file. If I get the PHP info file, I get a lot of information out of that. So uh, this, it, it, it tells us the configuration information and or they have kept some other text file or any other file for the sake of their easy, easy, ease of doing job and it is available in production server, definitely the system is vulnerable to various attacks. Then telnet service vulnerability. So SSH must be deployed and very important DNS zone transfer vulnerability. What is the task of DNS? It will convert our domain name to IP address. Now, for domain to IP address conversion, they contact many other servers, either an iterative procedure or recursive procedure. And this zone transfer must be secure enough from a dedicated server only. For that, bind service is there. So, if the bind service is also not configured properly, so we'll get uh, the DNS zone transfer vulnerability will happen. That means Anybody from outside can get the idea of that uh, uh, of that DNS zone. Uh, one more question from Nagesh. We create virtual server, then how much it uh, secure from the attack? Actually, virtual server is the same, same as the physical server. The, com the network comprises of the switches, firewall, routers, and network. And the how the how how can the um, um, configuration has been done to all this network element and the web server either the server is virtual virtual or physical so, so their configuration should be secure so it cannot be say that the uh, virtual server is more secure or less secure it depends upon the configuration security configuration of the server yes yes very correct so again experience works out here so even though it is VM or physical, actually VM is what? It's the logical version of multiple physical server. So actually you are having that much of server instead of physical hardware, you are having in a single machine that much of server. So you have to secure your system as for the need of the OS. Whether it is VM, whether it is uh, uh, physical and I mean standalone server, the security procedure is same, vulnerability analysis is same. So, and finally, the telnet service. As I have told, telnet service is very, very insecure service. So, SSH should be deployed again with proper version and protocol. So with this, we are actually done with that uh, vulnerability analysis technique. So uh, is there any question?
So I think no. So, so should we show our face uh, part or we or we should wind up? It's up to CDAC, ma'am. Should we continue with our question answer part or we should wind up? You can continue, ma'am. Okay. So, if we come to nutshell, what is vulnerability? Any idea as it is for interactive part, so I will expect some answer in the chat box. Well, so as I did not get any answer, so I am giving you the answer. Basically, weakness or gap in a security system. Well, some type of testing I have mentioned. It is penetration testing, vulnerability testing, and application security testing. Well, what is the majorly used vulnerability scanner? Actually, there are many scanners, but as measures gives less number of false positive, so we use basic, uh, majorly we use measures for vulnerability scanning. Yeah, HTTP methods, many methods are available, but all these are not uh, recommended to use. Only get, get, and post methods are only recommended to use. So these are the some configuration vulnerability like weak password policy, weak audit policy, insecure fraud, and insecure share permission. So these are mixed with Windows and Linux systems. Yes, that was the end. We did not make it longer so that people do not get bored. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any question, you can ask us. Arula, do we have any question? Yes, one question has come from again Nagis Paswan. Uh, without buying space, uh, there is no need of the buying space on the cloud. Actually, uh, you can you can uh, create your virtual server uh, with your own. With the, at least you need some. At least you need one physical server. On physical server, you can you uh, install some hypervisor and create some container. Yeah, uh, yes, more than right. one container uh, on the on one physical server, so that you can install different OS and you can uh, make different virtual machine on a single server, but do not need any buy any space on the cloud or network server. Yeah, if your cost permits are definitely you can go uh, proceed for buying, but explicitly no need is there. In fact, we, we have also configured our PM like that way only. We have installed ESX, right? And on that we have uh, deployed many uh, operating systems. So, is there any other question? Uh, so, we can wind up with it soon. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much. This is Anupam. Uh, uh, this is the last lec uh, lecture and it was very interesting and uh, everybody has, uh, I have seen that people are interacting with you also. So I